So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. In this episode, we're going to break down a comparison between iOS 17.1.1 and One UI 6, or just iOS 17 versus the latest One UI in general. We're not going to be taking a look at every single feature, but by the end of this video, you should kind of have an idea which one you prefer um, going forward. The S24 Ultra only a couple months away, but this is a good representation of the software you're going to see on that device. So we're gonna begin this video by showing you that we are definitely on One UI. This is based on the Android 14 software. And then over here on the iOS uh, side of things, we do have iOS 17.1.1. Now 17.2 is already in late stages of beta and will be available very soon here, probably in December. But we're gonna begin here by talking about the security and privacy section, because that's an important thing to a lot of people. So Samsung actually has some new updates in privacy and security. If you go down here, there's this new feature called auto blocker. Now, when you click auto blocker, you see it keeps your phone safe by detecting threats and suspicious activity, turns on app security checks and blocks commands via USB cable. So malicious chargers, computers, etc. Um, it can do that now. So there's going to be some features on here you won't find on the Apple side of thing, but Apple does have built-in and then encryption, and we do have ourselves really good privacy and security as well with the convenience of Face ID. Also, you can do this thing where you can allow apps to request a track. I know you could do that on Android as well. Um, but they do have this right here, a sensitive content warning. Um, you can change the privacy reports if you want. There's a lot of things you can do in the Safari with the privacy. So a lot of, you know, privacy features available for, you know, iPhone, but they're kind of just built in. Um, whereas Samsung, you do have a little bit more that you can play around with in terms of, you know, enabling things yourself. Also, they do have this nice section where you could see lost device protection, uh, you can do scans, and there's more security settings here, enhanced data protection. Um, you could do things down here as well, like the secure folder, which is something you don't have on the iPhone. So there are um, a lot of great security features on both. With the Knox built-in, I always feel safe on the Samsung, and you definitely want to do some of those features or your phone will be less safe. Um, whereas the iPhone is kind of just a really strong built-in security. They don't really let you allow, they don't allow you to do third-party apps. So it's kind of um, easy security. It's already built in, whereas Samsung really strong built in as well. But you can go a step further if you want to with their you know security and privacy in One UI 6. Okay, so which one has the better quick panel or control center? So you can see this is the new quick panel. One thing to note is that the iPhone, you bring it down from the right. Samsung kind of copied that feature. You can now bring down the entire quick toggles layout from the right. Now Samsung has moved the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth toggles up here. Also they moved the eye comfort shield in dark mode down here. Now I quite like that because it's front and center and a lot of times we do enable and disable dark modes and things like that. Also if you just pull down one time from over here you'll see we do have ourselves the shorter version of the quick toggles. Now over here for iPhone, if you swipe over here on the left, you go down straight into notification. So it's kind of similar, but there's no quick toggle section uh, to enable stuff. So you're just gonna be limited to the full toggle or the notifications tray over here. Now when you are in the control center, you cannot really tweak or edit anything straight from iPhone, although I do think it looks very beautiful and very clean. Let me know what you think of Samsung's iteration of the quick panel. This is a big change. For them, let me know if you like it or dislike it. Now you can see down here you do have smart view and device control. Now if you click this little pen icon up here, you can actually enable, you can actually edit the top icons. Um, there's up to six, or you can enable the edit the full ones, which you have plenty and plenty of options. And we're not going to talk about every one of them, but there are tons. So I think um, a little bit more going on here for the Samsung. Apple still has that simplicity factor. But you can really load up the Apple phone with a lot of, you know, icons up there as well, just by going over here in the settings, control center, and you can see the options go on and on. However, that that extra step to go into settings, go into control center, it is a little bit annoying, but at the same time, it keeps things looking clean over here. Because if we had another little icon to press something to edit things, I think it does uh, make it a little messier looking. So... While I like those options, it, does, it doesn't it does look quite as clean to me. That's just my personal opinion. You could differ. But still, I like the functionality. So it, it's more like 
form over there, function over here. Also, if you notice in the quick uh, panel layout over here, you can actually power off the phone right here. And speaking of powering off the phone, you have three options there. So restart button. You do have the emergency call and power off. But over here on One UI 6 at the bottom, you'll see you also have side button settings as well. Um, you can actually tweak those. Now that's gonna be similar to Apple's action button. Um, you over here, you can go ahead and see that we do have emergency call, metal call ID, and power off. Um, we do have the action button over here, which is something that I would say is similar to the Samsung's side button key where you can quick launch camera. Now I have it for ringer, but you got again, you have to go in just like always with Apple. You got to go in and then you got to tweak it here. Now, again, it looks very premium, very nice here for the iPhone. So I do think it's got a really good look to it. But um, Samsung, once again, over here on the right side, you can change what this power button does. So this is kind of, it's the doubles as their power button, kind of like an action button as well. And then they even have a section to show you how to power off your phone if you don't know how to do that. So while they have a lot going on, at least they have some tips and tricks in there to easily tell you what you're doing if you get confused. Now, when it comes to the brightness control settings, you'll see if we pull it down, there's one right there. If you click the three dot menu, they also have an extra brightness mode, which is something you can't really do on the iPhone adaptive brightness as well, which is like auto brightness. Now here for the iPhone over here, of course it's right there up and down, very simple. Click in, you got true tone stuff. But in terms of auto brightness, here's the annoying thing about the iPhone with auto brightness. You actually have to go, not here, you would go on display and brightness and be like, well, where's the auto brightness? They have the automatic, you know, dark mode, light mode. But if you wanna change the auto brightness, you gotta go to accessibility, display and text size, and then you gotta go down here to auto brightness. So that is a super few steps to get into that. And some people will say, why is my iPhone so dim? And they don't realize that they don't know how to, they have auto brightness on and it's just dimming it automatically. In addition, you can reduce white point on here by setting up an accessibility shortcut into the control center. But if you don't know how to do that, you're gonna have to go over an accessibility, display, and then down here, reduce white point. Um, so I think Samsung does a better job with display brightness as well because they have a second toggle when you pull down over here where you don't have to pull the full tray down and you can quickly change it. So easier to manage brightness. Also in the settings menu, if you go to display, you'll see that you do have the auto brightness, which is called adaptive brightness already right there. Extra brightness, which takes full advantage of that display. Screen modes, adaptive refresh modes. Again, the refresh changes are not in the display section as well for the Apple device. So you can change the resolution to save some battery. There's just a lot more. We can go on and on, but there's just a lot more you can do with, with this display. And then they tell you with this nice little message, are you looking for something else? And then if you say vision enhancements, let's go here. Now you can go ahead and do color filters and, and all the stuff you wanna do, remove animations, extra dim modes. And by the way, that extra dim mode, which is similar to reduce white point on the iPhone is actually right here in toggles. You don't have to set it up. It's usually on by default or in this quick panel layout by default. So it's not hard to find or anything like that. So hands down, I think One UI wins when it comes to setting up brightness and you know managing the display essentially. Okay, so let's take a look at the home screen layout and navigation. So you do have app library here, iOS 17, as well as some widgets off to the left. Now, if you hold down here, you'll see you can have multiple pages. You can actually move these pages around and then you can go ahead and turn them on and off. You can hide them. I really like that you can hide them on iOS 17. Um, you can have them in the background. Like for example, sometimes I will hide my main page for a video that we're doing a speed test because we're focused on the speed, not my personal apps. And so you could see right here, then you just have your regular grid. Also, I like how on iOS, you can drag down here on these dots and kind of just quickly go through them. That's a cool little neat feature. And then again, if you hold down up here on the left, you have the ability to add some widgets on board. So plenty of widgets. Now I do feel like Samsung kind of copied the look of the iOS widget section, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now on Samsung, you could pinch in to go to the different pages. You have Google Discover off on the left. Um, you can't really swipe through like that. I, mean, I think you might be able to tap a button. Yeah, you can tap it, but you can't swipe through. That's an iOS thing. So you can see right there, 
but you can add plenty of pages and plenty of pages. Whereas with iOS, you actually have to drag apps onto the page before adding the page. So on here, you can add the page, keep it blank and then add it later. Whereas with iOS, if we go over here, let's go ahead, not widgets, let's go ahead down here. So you can see there's no add page option. You kind of have to create your own page by adding a new application. So you'll go like this and then like that. And then you'll notice that on the iOS home screens, you cannot really put apps wherever you want. They always fly off to the corners, which I'm not a big fan of, but I don't see Apple going away from that because if they were to do that, then their software will look very similar to Android phones. And then people could kind of perceive it as a little bit messy. I just don't see Apple putting the ability to put apps wherever you want anytime soon. Um, but yeah, anyway, on the home screens, you do have the ability to go down here and you'll see... Um, different settings for these home screens. You have different layouts for the Samsung. It goes on and on with the app screen grids and the folder grids. So just a lot. Again, Samsung, man, it just loads it up. This thing is loaded with features. Um, and let's, th let's take a look too, before we stop talking about display home screens is the, uh, what is it? The widgets, the widgets here. So like I say, the way it's laid out here is very similar to how Apple did it. They didn't used to look like this. That's why I say it kind of, I think they copied iOS in this, in this respect, even up here where it shows the recommend, it looked very similar, but it goes on and on. You have a lot of similar types of widgets on board here for the one UI. Um, so it's really a nice experience overall, but I'm just saying they look very similar. Now this widget right here is actually a new one, the dynamic weather widget. Um, it allows you to see kind of like a preview of what, what's happening today. And then just the regular, temperature and stuff like that. And I also like how Samsung's weather has this little guy that he dresses up and changes. They, it depends. It could be, a, I'm not sure. I think it changes between women and a guy, but it can, it changes like the way that they're dressed to kind of show you how to dress for that temperature. So today is 40, which is not super cold. Um, it's cold, but this guy is wearing a fleece with like some pants. You know, he's got his headphones on some boots. Like th that's kind of how you would want to dress. You probably would want a hat on like he's wearing right there in mild temperatures. So yeah, it's pretty cool that it tells you kind of how to dress just based on um, that picture. Okay, so let's talk about animations. Now, both of these do have nonlinear animations. We've talked about this in our speed test portions um, of these comparisons, but I got to tell you, man, really Samsung has come a long way. We'll show that in a minute, but Apple has been the gold standard here. And with the 120 Hertz ProMotion display on board, the iPhone just always feels butter. It doesn't matter what you do. Some people have argued in the comments that, hey, man, I think Apple is slower animations. That's why it kind of looks smooth all the time. Well, that could be the case, but it's also because they control hardware and software and the chipset. But you can see now with Samsung having these nonlinear animations, take a look at this. This thing is just buttery smooth here on the Galaxy. And don't give me that. Oh, wait till it's a year old. That doesn't matter anymore, bro. Like, honestly, Sam's, this phone is almost a year old. And look at it. Look at it fly. So don't give me that garbage no more. This is not Samsung of 2014. This is 2023. Samsung has stepped it up. And, of course, they've stepped up the prices, too. But you can see that the the animations are great on both devices. The performance of One UI and iOS is going to vary. But I think the One UI... Uh, and Samsung on Samsung Snapdragon versions, especially the Snapdragon versions, is uh, it just appears faster. I think it's the animations they speed up. The applications in my speed test have launched a little faster. The phone overall just feels snappier than iOS. Um, I think iOS still, in some respects, feels more polished, a little more smooth. But I do think Samsung's version of Android is one of the most polished out there, alongside of Google's Pixel's devices. But you can see it's just like a really polished look, maybe because those animations are super smooth. I don't know how to describe it. It's a feel thing. You just feel it. You feel it every day. Samsung sometimes has a little bounce on the animation, which can kind of slow it down a little, but it's not going to do it here because every time I talk about something like that, it always shows me up in the video. You know how that goes. But at the same time, there's a little bounce there sometimes. And sometimes I get an app that just acts weird on both phones. So, Neither are really that much different in that respect. But at the same time, both of these phones perform like an absolute beast. So it doesn't matter which you go with. You're going to win in that respect. But which one has the better app library or app drawer? So you can see right here, app library. 
I like how App Library organizes everything for you. It's very easy. However, I don't like that you can't turn it off. Whereas with the Samsung, you have the ability to go alphabetical or your own custom order. Now, custom order is really messy to me, so I don't really use custom order. But at the same time, if you go to settings here, you can actually have a home screen only. And actually, the home screen only right now is messy because I didn't really organize anything. But this is kind of like the older iOS where they didn't have an app library. And I like that because I don't like the app library all the time. I like it sometimes, but I would like the option to turn off app library and just kind of organize my own home screens. It makes it more simple to me. Whereas I feel like I have this clutter of apps off to the right, even though they're organized clutter, it's still clutter of apps. So I do like that Samsung gives me that option. But see, the thing with Samsung is even though they have that simple to use feature, the actual software itself is still loaded with features. So it doesn't really ever feel like a super simple software. It always feels like it's polished with loads and loads of features, which a lot of people love and I love too. And yes, I know you could say, Nick, bro, you can just make it simple. Go download the launcher, go download a minimal launcher if that's what you want. No, that's not what I want. I'm just saying that it never really feels like a super minimalistic feel, kind of like Google Pixel's software feels. Now let's compare their weather applications. Um, weather is, again, I think Samsung is kind of taking notes here from Apple because they have like the same, um, the same like shows you the hourly forecast. I think Apple did that a little bit more uh, first than Samsung, but they have a new update here where they show the air quality in the same section. Um, pretty much the same information, not very different. Now, I do like how Apple is showing the wind speed and it shows the actual Southwest. I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to read an arrow. When I wake up in the morning, I need simple. I like that it says Southwest right there. Like I'm not trying, I could tell, come on. Like I'm not trying to read that arrow. I'm not trying to do that type of a uh, calculation in my head. Is it, is that arrow pointing east or west or north? Not just tell me, Samsung, you need to update this. Put southwest right there. It makes it easier. Also, we have UV indexes right here on the same sides. Humidity is down here, down here, and it's over here. Visibilities uh, information, they have essentially the same exact information on both. It just comes down to which one you like more. Now, Apple's, I like how they show the actual clouds and things kind of going through um, it kind of shows you dynamic weather, like exactly what's happening. So if it's raining, it'll be raining. Now, Samsung does that to a respect as well. But you can see that, again, with that little guy right there, he shows you how to dress and stuff. I do like that. I also like how Samsung has this little you know, notification that tells you, okay, rain is coming possibly this afternoon. They give you a little bit of information there you could swipe through and play around with. So overall, both of them very simple and easy. I don't really find one better than the other. It just comes down to your personal preference. Um, I do have to say, though, that the weather widget, this dynamic one, is definitely an upgrade over Apple's because it just kind of gives you a notification of what to expect. And then you do have just the basic one like Apple has. So Apple, or Samsung always seems to do something that makes Apple phones look like they're basic. That's what I feel like. Just like this one. It's been so many years with Apple calculators we still don't have history. Now, every iPhone for the past several years, I've been downloading a calculator with history. Thankfully, there are some calculators out there like this one. All these years, I've been downloading a history-based calculator because thankfully, there has been so many calculators out there um, that have given me history, but not the official Apple calculator. So I got to go over here and then you got to look for one with no ads. Now you can do this. You can swipe back if you make a mistake. Like if you go like this and you got to swipe back, that's cool. But at the same time, where's the history? Samsung's calculator, 56 plus, it even shows you the next calculation. Look at it. It just, it destroys the Apple calculator. It's not even close. So that's just something. Like I say, Samsung always trying to make, they always have something that makes Apple look like a basic phone by comparison. And that's one of the examples right there. At the same time, giving Apple credit, the basic or the minimal feel of that for some people is what is what they want. They want something simple. They don't want it complex. And not that a history on a calculator is complex, but for some, they maybe they just want to do one calculation at a time. I'm not sure. You'll see an Apple Music versus Samsung Music. There is a very stark difference here. They have a built-in streamer from a third-party Spotify, whereas, you know, Apple has their own. That's another theme throughout iOS and Samsung is Samsung. 
um, uses Google services. You can see right here, it loads it up with Google services. They also use Microsoft services, which I don't have downloaded on here because I don't use Microsoft services. And then they have their own ecosystem. So it's still all these mashup of different services, which to me is not as simple and clean as is Apple's. I think Google is a little bit better with that as well because they're using their own software and hardware and it's their Android system. So that's closer to Apple. But Samsung has all this extra going on, which some people, again, don't mind. If you're into like Windows computers and you like downloading all your programs and you got tons of them, it's going to be a great phone for you. You're going to like it. Also works very well with Windows versus this doesn't work very well. Play it doesn't very play very nice with Windows, but um, plays beautifully with a Mac. Whereas this doesn't play beautifully with a Mac. You'll see right here back to music. Samsung's is just kind of a it's like a it houses music for you. It holds music for you. It's kind of a music player with the addition of Spotify. Few features in here: sound quality and effects. But Apple Music is like a full service. It's kind of like a competitor to Spotify, a competitor to Amazon Music, a competitor to YouTube Music. It's its own platform here. So Apple Music versus Samsung Music, Apple Music clearly wins that. Now, iOS 17 has, well, Apple Health, and then over here on Samsung, you have Samsung Health. And I do feel like Samsung Health is actually more simple to operate. It just has a little bit less features to me, but... Apple's health goes way in depth. So I do think Apple spends a little bit more efforts on their health uh, application. They're really, this is something they take very serious. They have a whole team dedicated to just this application alone and how this works with Apple Watch. So I think if you really are serious about tracking your health, I think the Apple device is a little bit more in tuned. But if you just want to, you know, track some water and stress and just sleep and things like that and cycling and just your day to day fitness and stuff like that, I think the Samsung is perfectly well suited to do stuff like that. But if you're going to dive deeper into tracking medication, mental well being, respiratory health, nutrition, you're going deep dive. You're one of those type of people. The iPhone combined with the iPad and the Mac, the whole health system they got going on, the whole application, you can go really deep into this. They even give you um, tips and tricks about it as well. So I would say I would probably give Apple the win when it comes to health. It seems like they take it a little bit more deep than Samsung does. But Samsung Health is still very, it is very good too. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. It's one of the best out there. Um, but it's definitely, a, to me, a little bit behind Apple Health. Okay, so let's take a look at settings. Now, one thing I'll tell you is that Samsung actually brought a new font to One UI 6 over here. If you go down here to the font, you'll see we do have ourselves the default font. Now, they used to just use Roboto font, which is what you have on all Android phones. So when you first get into One UI 6, you're going to think something looks weird. and It's mostly the font. I've gotten used to it already. I kind of like it. Um, it just gives it a fresh look. They also change these icons next to the applications. So those also look a little bit fresher. But to me, they look like they kind of tried to do an iOS move over here. Because if you look to the side here, they look very similar to these iOS icons. However, you'll see if you scroll down to the bottom, Apple's still loading all your applications. They like, come on, when are you just going to put apps like, let's get it together. That looks so messy. Like, it just keeps going and going with all the applications you have. Not a fan at all of that. Whereas with here, it's a shorter settings menu, so it appears to be more simple. Now, both have the ability to search, but you can see they both have a picture of you, and then you can search for pretty much anything in both of these in the settings area very easily. I do like how in Samsung, though, let's say you go to navigation. Let's go, you go to navigation here navigation bar they'll give you a little highlight where it's at you seen how i like highlight it let's do that again navigation bar it'll scroll down highlight there it goes it'll kind of like highlight and be like here's where it's at it tells you right where it's at i really like that also the ability to navigate on the home screens you have plenty you have the buttons you could change them around you can hide the gesture hint you can keep the gesture hint this is not anything new you've been able to do this but we're talking ios versus one ui and that's a nice thing. Now on the lock screens, this is a new feature for One UI 6 we're gonna show in a second here. You do have the ability to change all these different wallpapers, customize um, the clocks and stuff like that for iOS, change the colors. There's plenty going on there as well as adding widgets and all that good stuff as well. But on One UI 6, we also have features like that. Let's go ahead and get back in iOS. We also have features like that. So let's go into settings 
and we'll go to lock screens. Lock screens here. You can edit the lock screen clearly. You can change different clocks. You can even have analog clocks. The cool thing though is that you can, of course, you can change these. These came with One UI 5. You can move this clock basically anywhere you want on the lock screen. Pretty cool, if you ask me. Also, you can change different colors and stuff like that, and you got notifications that pop up below. But then you also have different weather widgets you can put on here. You can see right there, it'll let you reorder those. So the list goes on. Um, there's, they're pretty similar in that respect as well. Notifications are more at the top, um, whereas on iOS, they kind of, they start, they come at the bottom, and they just populate right here. Um, with, with Apple's though, or with Samsung's, you can kind of swipe down like this, kind of get quick glance information. Both of them pretty good in those respects. There's, there's not major differences, but really both very strong. Now, generally customizing iOS would mean that you have to go over here into here and then find like, custom. you just type customization, customization here. Okay, customize home screen. They have a lot of applications that allow you to customize. Now with Samsung, all you gotta do is hit themes, go to Galaxy Theme Store, and you do have the ability to customize your home screen with whatever type of theme you want. Different wallpapers, different icons, different always on displays, the list goes on. In addition, with the Samsung, I do wanna mention one thing right quick. They have a number row on the keyboard. We don't have any number row on the keyboard for the iPhone. Also within this software, if you take a look at Safari and you take a look at Samsung Internet, it also goes dark based on the mode, so it matches the mode. On the iPhone, you do have the bar at the bottom, but you also have the ability to bring that bar down here. And also there's a lot of internet settings right there, whereas Apple, you can do these, but then you gotta go into settings, scroll down, find Safari to get more in depth into the settings. So both of them loaded, but I do don't, I don't like how Apple doesn't darken Safari automatically like Samsung internet does. Now, most of their applications like the clock have similar features, the calendars have similar features, but with the Samsung, especially the S23 Ultra, this is exclusive, you can do things like write on the calendar down here with the pen, that's something that's very different. But again, you are combining the Google Calendar with Samsung's calendar, with Samsung software, so it gets a little, it can get a little messy, in my personal opinion, that's just my take, but some people might disagree or agree, it's up to you. Now when it comes to wallpapers, I'm not really a fan of the provided ones on either. I think Google Pixel crushes both of these guys when it comes to wallpapers. Just very basic wallpapers included on both. I wish they would give us a lot more. Um, if you go into settings here, again, you gotta do extra steps in iOS to get to the wallpapers. You can add them here. And I noticed that these start to get a little slow when you have like a lot, like I do, I got a ton of wallpapers in here. Sometimes it takes a while for these to appear once you have a lot of them in there. I don't like how Apple has been getting rid of the stock wallpapers that come with the iPhones when a new iOS comes out. That annoys me too. Um, but overall, both of them, not the, my favorite. So what I do is I download on the Samsung Google wallpapers and I just use the ones that Pixel provides. In addition to that, you can download plenty of wallpaper apps on both of them. One of my favorite is Vellum. So if you go over here to App Store, type in Vellum. And this is not sponsored. I just really like that wallpaper. So just wanted to mention it. So when it comes to their cameras, let's go ahead and open up the cameras here. On the iPhone, you'll see we do have all these very simple features, cinematic, slow-mo. You know, we don't really gotta go on and on. We know what the iPhone is. It's a very simple camera. We're talking One UI 6 though here. Samsung has changed a few things. They make everything very simple right there. You can swipe like this to change between cameras, and everything is pretty similar in here as well, so we don't gotta talk much about that. But if we go into settings, you'll see they have these advanced intelligent options now, where you can take medium photos or minimum capture photos to speed up shutter speed and give you maybe a little bit of a less quality picture, but faster. In addition, you can do watermarks now on One UI 6, so it can say which phone you're taking it with, um, tracking autofocus, shooting methods, there's plenty of those. You can use the S Pen to take photos, you can turn off the shutter sound. I like how all the camera settings are right here, front and center for the device. Also, when you take a photo, if you go down here, they have this intelligent processing mode right here. Well, that's actually, actually them. And if you go down here to settings, you go to this editor, you'll see right here these four circles will allow you to see the lasso tool, color mix styles, and a lot of editing options right there. 
<clears throat> also, this, Apple has this type of stuff too, where you can go ahead and tweak after the fact. So let's go ahead and take a look at the iPhones here. Take the photo, we'll go here. You'll go over here to hit edit. Then you'll see the ability to change all these different things as well as filters. Again, Apple's is a little more simple, a little bit more professional looking, I would say, whereas Samsung's is more like a fun pixler type of editor <laughs> after the fact. So that, that that's just a little bit of a difference. Um, but overall, the cameras, it really comes down to you want more zoom with the hardware and stuff like that. But the camera software, you got to go into settings to tweak everything for iPhone. For Samsung, everything was right there in the camera. I don't really want to waste your time with this. There is no multitasking for the iPhone. So... You know, split view, pop view, multitasking, split screen. I'm not going to waste your time. This is a clear win to one UI. You can only do one app at a time on iPhone, which is really ridiculous in 2023 that you can't even split an app on the iPhone. So that's a total win. Plus, you got edge panels, app pairs. It goes on and on. This is a computer in your pocket. This is a phone. Um, that's how I feel about multitasking. When it comes to the galleries, you can see that you can pinch in, pinch out, zoom in. Pretty similar in those respects although samsung's has a left panel that shows you some other things so again reminds me more of a computer here down here you have your libraries and different search you can search on both of them so in terms of the gallery they're not super different um, but you do have more of a kind of like a file folder look on the samsung versus more of just a regular phone gallery look on the iphone and of course there's a lot of like ai type features or Basically, like where you can search and it kind of automatically, because these phones are so smart, could just find it based on what you're asking um, for, for the photo to show you. So the iPhone also has the one-handed mode, but no ability to go into a landscape mode. Stays in portrait all the time. I don't like that either. Um, one UI does have a much more customizable, again, Samsung making Apple's features look basic, has a very nice one-handed mode. In addition, if we go ahead and put this thing in the auto rotate, we'll go like this. Samsung allows you to auto rotate. One UI 6 also brings, they take away the things that say Samsung messages or Samsung, what well, didn't say Sam, Samsung health. They kind of just clean this up by just saying my files wearable. They don't put Samsung in front of everything. So they're getting a little bit more clean right there, but that's kind of a Samsung specific thing. Also, I have to give Samsung credit for this one feature Apple doesn't provide. I mean, of course, with the new USB-C on iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can actually beam your iPhone to a monitor, but Samsung takes it to the next level because you don't even need a USB-C cable. You can just connect wirelessly to any monitor that has Bluetooth and you can and wireless connectivity and you could just basically have a whole computer experience, connect a keyboard and a mouse and your phone is a computer. So Dex just easily takes the cake over iOS 17 in that respect. Now, when it comes to focus modes, both of them do have those. In the Samsung, it's called modes and routines. And then over here in Apple, it's called focus. So let's go to focus. And you can see both of them similar features. You can make your own custom ones as well. So you can share them across devices if you do have, you know, different Samsung devices or different Apple devices. So they're both pretty similar there. Okay, so with Samsung Files, I'm much more of a fan of their file system just because it reminds you a lot more of a computer. Now, Apple's is solid as well. It'll show you what's on my iPhone and stuff like that. And you can go to downloads. You can tag them by different colors. Again, if you're using Mac and stuff, you'll probably really like the iPhones. If you're using the Windows, you'll really like Samsung's. But I think Samsung's is much more like a computer. It's very easy and very well laid out. So when you plug in an SSD or something, it's a little bit easier to transfer stuff, drag and drop. It feels just very natural. So the file system to me is much more, it's just better on the Samsung, if I'm being honest with you. But the iPhone one is definitely much better than having none. Like they used to back in the day, they didn't have none. So files are still solid, but uh, both of them do have like quick share and airdrop, so they can both easily transfer things between respective devices. So if you have a Samsung tablet or a Samsung computer, it works great. If you have an Apple device, Apple tablet computer, that works great. So pretty similar there as well. Now, from an accessibility standpoint, I do feel like Apple's is a little bit more in depth than Samsung's. They have a few, don't get me wrong. They got a, quite a few in here, but Apple just goes to the next level with accessibility. So Accessibility features are solid on Samsung, but they're just better 
on the iPhone. So if you want more when it comes to accessibility, go with the iPhone. That's going to be the winner for you right there. So both of these do have a way to restrict screen time and stuff like that through the iPhone. It's through screen time. You have privacy and content restrictions. Now you'll want to do these similar things in digital well-being for Samsung. It'll give you a screen time goal. It'll give you settings where you can do different things in there. And this is where you're going to want to do stuff. Also, it combines it with the focus mode, which is why they're asking that there. But I like this feature Apple has, which tells you to reduce the eye strain of myopia in children. You can turn on the screen distance. And when you get too close to this phone, let me see if I can trigger it right here. Give me one second. Going to see if I'm too close, if it can recognize it. Well, I'm not able to get it right now, but if you use this for a little bit too long, the screen distance notification does pop up. It can get pretty annoying if you're used to having your phone close to, to you, though. But it can definitely help reduce eye strain, which is something that's very huge. Also, some Samsung phones have a little bit too much PWM, which can also can cause eye strain. But that's a different topic for a different day. So we didn't cover every single thing, though. There is more when it comes to Samsung. Like, we can go into the advanced features talk about how they have a lot more motions and gestures. They do have labs feature, which is um, always being improved depending on the updates. Um, but overall, I would say at the end of the day, the pros and cons um, are for Samsung, there's just way more customization to me. It's just way cleaner than older Samsung, but still provides that heavy level of customization, that heavy level of function that you might like. Um, goes, it's just a productivity powerhouse on the Samsung over here. To me, sometimes that's a little too much though. And so I still really prefer the simplicity of the iPhone experience, even with the latest iOS is not giving you everything. As a phone, I think Apple pretty much nails it um, as a phone, but as a, a computer replacement or a tablet replacement or something that just does it all, they just don't touch Samsung. They're just not close. And that's the bottom line. Either way you go though, both of them provide a similar level of features um, in terms of just the basic stuff that you would want in a flagship phone. Um, but I do think Apple or Samsung could definitely clean up a little bit when it comes to, you know, these. I don't know how they're going to do it, but these just maybe put these Google apps and Samsung in the same folder. I don't know. It just looks it looks a little messy with that two things. Um, but which one better for you really comes down to are you heavy user? Are you a heavy productivity user? You're not going to like the Apple device. Um, if you're a heavy iMessage user, you are not going to like the Samsung device. If you're a heavy uh, Apple ecosystem user, AirPods, Apple iPad, Mac, this one is not for you. If you're into Windows, you use Windows computers, you have you don't have a computer. You just want a computer from your phone with a monitor. This is a great value in the Samsung. But One UI 6 versus iOS 17, that's going to wrap it up here. Um, Apple still gets faster updates and longer support. Samsung has really improved this though. So it's not really super behind. It's just keep in mind, they typically go for their most latest flagship first. So when the S24 Ultra comes out next year, when One UI 7 comes out, the Galaxy S24 is going to get it before the S23. So that's something I still don't like about Samsung is that they give, they have spread out releases, even though they're doing a lot better than before. The iPhone is still the, the king of software updates. So at the end of the day, let me know which one you prefer. I tried to give you my fairest take on both of them. Again, it might have seemed like I was talking more about Samsung because it is the latest software. So that was kind of the intent here. But share your thoughts down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. And let me know if you want to see this again next year. Uh, maybe we'll make this an annual tradition. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.